everybody. Raul here for Bass Musician Magazine, and today we have the great honor and pleasure of chatting with bassist and vocalist Matt Cohen. You might right. recognize Matt from New Language, and we're definitely going to talk a little bit about that. But Matt, as always, we like to go to the past. How did you get started in music and on bass? How did I get started on music and bass? I would say my kind of music career started when I was a like a many people, a really young kid, probably five, six years old, where I have a single mom and a sister, and she had us just doing all activities, sports, musical theater, music, and everything. So I really, honestly, I got into kind of performance theater as a little kid around middle school, started gravitating towards the orchestra pit, you know, and started actually on drums. And so I started playing drums in probably the fourth fourth grade and it wasn't until the seventh grade though when I joined the middle school marching band on drums so still rhythm section and there was just like a couple bass players they were letting electronic bass players in the middle school marching band because why are you going to deny a seventh grader any you know sure an opportunity to play music so I I just kind of gravitated towards them there was a few dudes in it and I got my first bass in the seventh grade and it was a washburn. I still have it actually right here. Yeah, never gonna can't get rid of it. I actually haven't gotten rid of any of my bases. There's a memory attached to all of them. Yeah. But yeah, started my first band in the seventh grade, actually largely through church. I was new to town and everyone was going to church and like it's a parents probably dream scenario at that <laughs> you know, to have okay, you wanna go to church? Sure. Yeah. You know, so I joined the worship band in about the seventh grade and after church would end, we would start playing like thrice covers and AFI covers and the get up kids covers and taking back Sunday. And so we were kind of I'm from Irvine, California. We were kind of a lot of these little kids first local bands you know like seventh grade you're like whoa these guys are playing punk music now after church and so from the start we were a band and we had these built-in friends and fans at a young age and then it just evolved through middle school and high school and here i am 20 something years later and still playing bass man i've been in a band since i was probably 13 or 14 years old so. Very nice. Well, you're in the right place. You know, a lot of times location, certainly down in Southern California, yeah. it, it can really kind of cultivate because you get to know other musicians and, you know, it, it's, it's kind of a, a snowball there. Now, New Language has been together since 2016. Yeah. And you have a new album that just came out last December. Last that, December. Stuck with yourself. Before we were recording, we were talking a little bit about kind of the, the release philosophy it started out as an ep1 with three tunes no time can't explain and paranoid yeah but now it's full bore the entire album tell us about this piece of the work rollout. so in retrospect i would say it was a little long of a rollout i can admit i can admit <laughs> you know a lot really we wrote this album like two years ago or about a year and a half ago at this point you know and and we had plans all last year of course to tour on it and do the thing and no matter what we essentially you know in our work sense we kind of front loaded the work so we just had this collection of work we actually did though i remember it was like it's october 2018 19 we did come back we played a show in san francisco and we were like today we're going to start writing for the album like it was an album from the start so there was always intent for cohesiveness it was a collection of work that was meant to be together and over the last year our singer tyler demarest self-produced it he's he's an incredible producer in his own right and so we were Lucky to have him do it. And yeah, as we started finishing them, we also hadn't put out music. So we started releasing a couple songs from the full length, you know, just to kind of keep the activity going online. We had a couple big shows and that we wanted to promote. So we would use like a single release to promote those shows, like such as we played right before the pandemic hit. We had just had our opportunity of playing Aftershock Festival, like our first major music festival. So again, we, we had a song to release kind of to coincide with that big moment. So it was kind of, We'd released two songs just to coincide with big concerts, really. And then we always had the plan of launching the album on March 13th. It was going to be first song from the new album. Like we were going to kind of con start connecting dots on March 13th. I don't know if you remember March 13th, which I mean, you remember for sure, but it was quite literally the day that we uh, went into quarantine. Yeah. So <laughs> last year. So here we were with a new album campaign ready to go tours spring and summer tour both kind of just looked at each other and said well we're let's just stay on you know let's stick to the plan you know <laughs> like let's just continue forward so 
you know, first week of quarantine, we were filming, like we had just released a song. We were like, well, usually we'd have a release show. Usually we'd just have some more real life promo going on. But we, we filmed one of those like quarantine style band practices, like six days in. And really it was just, it was a mix of seeing what was going to happen with the pandemic, you know, like to before we just showed all of our cards and also just like we wanted just to kind of create the momentum heading into it, heading into the album. Really, there is like a strategic play that like marketers and if you're if you're up on releasing music on Spotify of like tapping into the release radar. So there was this like strategy type of scenario to it as well, as far as kind of like building on the single prior. Yeah, that was really it. You know, we wanted to come out of the gates with a strong song, retain them with a couple more. And then after about a few months, we were like, okay, let's let's release a couple more and just, you know, get the album out. So, uh, but yeah, so that was that was kind of it. We, you know, it's, it was almost like an A side, B side or a part one and part two. And then at the end, we kind of smushed them together. And yeah, man, I think from a fan and my even standpoint by the time the album came out a lot of the songs were, were out and um, we kind of got a big thumbs up for that like oh they, you know, i'd already heard this songs but ultimately in history you know like it's gonna live the way it was the the rollout you know for the year that it was uh sure. i don't know it, it worked it worked in in the regard behind the scenes but yeah stoked that the album's out now there you go well and it certainly is a street the strategy and adapting in these times is one of the most important things because yeah. so many groups that I talked to were either mid tour and got recalled and had to come back, you know, especially people yeah. that were in Europe and all that. When, when yeah. they announced, you know, like you've got a week to get back here, it's like, yeah. ah, <laughs> ah, here we yeah, go. Yeah. What's going yeah. On? yeah. So, you know, it did change a lot of things. Now the music proper, what you guys play, I know it falls with it. it and we always get into challenging definitions of genre of music oh, yeah. because it, it's within rock but it's all i find it to have kind of a, a unique blend of yeah. kind of other things there's in some issues there's there's a little bit of a darkness like almost punkish but you know like the gold skull and stuff yeah. is kind of like okay this is <laughs> i don't i'm not sure gothy or or whatever how do, how do you guys just self-describe your music I, towards the end here, I was calling it like hard, alter, harder alternative rock. We, we've always walked the line of, is it just a rock band? You know, our first album was categorized as post-hardcore, and which I thought made sense. Like, I don't think we, I, the origin story of New Language, honestly, was an answer. Tyler, Tyler, the singer, and I had been in a band for about eight years prior to New Language, and this was the answer to that band essentially burning out. And so our first album was just like, rip it you know mm -hmm. and rip it and record it really yeah. and so uh so that one was a little more aggressive and then i don't know we, we we're inspired by all over the place but with this record we did say like hey what let's mix some like some beats some rhythm some funk elements into it yeah. so you know i think our first record really provides us a foundation to lean into or fall back on in a great way, you know, because our roots, like the three of us all come from harder metal, hardcore backgrounds, you know, mm -hmm. and have just matured with our taste, you know, over time, like matured in all reasons. And um, yeah, so now I would say the album, I, I would call it just like a, there's definitely some alternative leaning songs on it, but just like a, it's been called modern rock, alternative rock, hard alternative rock. It's uh <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so hard to peg and you know, I guess for somebody that goes back like I do, back in the day it was a, a lot easier. You could look at a group and go, "Oh, they're heavy metal" or "Oh, that's just rock rock and roll" or something. But as the the genres have had chances to kind of take what they like from each other, you have yeah. uh, an evolution and a growth which is actually, you know, a real healthy thing and it's it's even fascinating how it affects the rest of the world. Sometimes we don't think about it, but I interviewed a bassist from Chile, and a lot of his influences were like Rush and you know Def Leppard, and, yeah. and you're kind of going, wow, all the way in, in Chile, and you were inspired by rock. You know, this yeah. is this is so wild. Yeah, and I would say like for a while it was the, the genre fluid. You know, like yeah. for today, like it was. And when I say a while, probably over the last 10, like it's really become the popularity in the last three years, four years with like artists really crossing over and creating that connection. But like our last band, for example, 
Tyler and I have always skewed towards kind of writing this hybrid and blend of genre like music. But our last band, I told you that burnout essentially it came from this is all over the place. Like, you know, like, it's, you know, this sounds like there's there's three different genres on this album that we put out. And now's the time for that. <laughs> now yeah. it's like we were, so I'd like to think we're ahead, we were ahead of the time. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, but yeah, no, you're you're totally right. I think it comes down to just there's so much more music out there nowadays. There's so much accessibility to music and just the recording software. You know, like you can make sounds, you know, in on your computer at your house that you couldn't 20 years ago. Yeah. You know, so I, I just think it's just opened up possibilities for everyone which has just led to this kind of interweaving of sounds and genres and influences gotcha well and speaking of sounds how are you getting your particular voice what kind of gear are you playing on I still play like i said I, I still have all my basses that i've ever had my og fave is my mu i've been playing music man since i was like 14 15 and i have this music man sub music man sub from back in the day it's my high school bass it's like it's getting a little beat up. The back's all, you know, it's, it's getting cool though because that's, that's all use. But I've been using this Music Man sub for over 10 years now. I, Schechter was nice enough. I play with a band called Holy Wars from LA. And um, Holy Wars played the Schechter NAM showcase last year. And so they gave me a nice Model T, which is absolutely beautiful. It's got like some EMGs. It looks kind of like a telly. And then I got a jazz bass. So kind of, you know, I, I feel like I definitely lean towards my clanky, clanky harder bass. Um, but then I got my jazz bass when needed, you know, for the softer, softer tone. And then honestly, I got this Boss Overdrive. It's the, the ODB3, mm -hmm. and that's been a fun pedal to have in the studio because I don't know, it gets a lot of bright yellow. People are like, what is that? And that's just been my bass distortion pedal since I've ever had a bass distortion pedal, really. And so therefore, whenever I picture or imagine what a, I want my distortion to sound like, it's mm -hmm. that boss, that boss yellow pedal, man. But yeah, I kind of, I joke, I got a lot of pedals that all do kind of the same thing, but different, you know? <laughs> gotcha. Like I got a Mastatron, um, that's kind of like a, a bit fuzz. I recently got a chorus that I find myself using quite often, kind of just to widen everything up. Got an octave pedal and the new language, I keep my sans amp on essentially, and then uh, new language. We we all got the drop pedal. I don't know if you've ever heard of the drop pedal, but it's Digitech and it essentially allows you to digitally detune your guitar. So I could be in D, but I can be in B by the flip of a switch, and it's really great for live. We use it in the studio every once in a while, but in the studio usually we just tune down. But yeah. for live, instead of standing on stage and having to untune your guitar and or get a new guitar it's just you turn it off and then it and yeah it's pretty cool nice nice so yeah. and amplification wise what are you playing on um, i've always had the ampeg SP, like the 8 by 10 the mm -hmm. unnecessarily necessary amp you know like especially nowadays it's it's so heavy <laughs> <and clanky. laughs> but then i do have a 4 by 10 i have the ashdown 4 by 10 galleon kruger has been my main I just got the Galleon Kruger 1001. And then recently, in the last year, I switched over to the orange uh, OB1, OB1 amp. It's a solid state, but it's got like a built-in built -in fuzz blend that is just a really fun new take. Essentially, I played a show that had backline with orange, and I was just like, oh, this is, this is powerful. Nice. So I went out and uh, got that as well. So Now, other elements, we always like to ask about strings. What, yeah. what are you playing on? I am playing on whatever strings I kind of get my hands on. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I got a bunch of Ernie balls right now and they work. You know, I yeah. can say I probably change my strings twice a year tops. You know, it depends if we're going to the studio, but otherwise I just beat these babies up. And yeah, so I just got the Ernie ball slankies. Nice. And then yeah. there's one last element in the sound chain that a lot of times gets a little overlooked, and that is instrument cables. Do you have a preference in instrument cable? Not really. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> an honest answer. Uh, yeah. You know, I, not really on instrument cables. I just switched, finally got uncabled and switched to wireless also in the last year. Uh, I did the photo shoot for Boss's new wireless system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you go on their website, that's my butt in all the photos. <laughs> that's my butt. My face isn't in any of the photos, but my, you know, I got the pack on me and that's my hip. There so, you go. 
super proud of my hip there. So uh, yeah, I, I have the Boss wireless system now. I see if I got the full. Have have all of the uh, hip well, model see. people been approaching you, following this to say, hey, we've seen your work. We want to get you in our. I seen that hip. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Sadly, I haven't gotten reached out to by you know maybe they like my belt, maybe they like my hip. But there you go. Oh, I was just lucky enough to uh no, but yeah, it's the Boss WL60. I, I got a lot of Boss actually. I got the Boss WL60 wireless, the Boss Overdrive, uh, the Boss Chorus, the Boss Tuner, and the mm -hmm. Boss Octave. Yeah, essentially through that experience, they were nice enough and gave me some some deals, and I was just like, sure, I'm gonna take you up for this. You know, we were like still in the studio, so it was fun. Gotcha. Well, yeah. and looking ahead. As as we're in the pandemic, I know there's a lot of we don't know what's going to happen in the future, but a lot of people have kind of loose plans. What are your plans for the future? You know, my plans for the future right now are just to, one, take it a day at a time, like you said. I think, I mean, to be honest, like the new language guys, we're all kind of split around L.A. And we honestly haven't even seen each other too much through this experience. Like I said, we had this album done right and it. it was getting mastered right before the pandemic hit and i think we're just gonna take it a day at a time you know and get back together when we're able to we're all taking it pretty seriously but in the meantime honestly me personally a lot of this pandemic has been me in my room writing new tunes for new language for something new and just continuing to create and just not trying to go crazy in here yeah. in my bedroom you know <laughs> Yeah, I would like to think, you know, New Language left off. We just, like I said, we just played our first major fest. Our last show was over at the Mayan Theater with a couple of great bands in L.A. And, and yeah, man, live performance is a huge part of my soul, my identity. So I have on my resolutions list to just play a show this year. Uh, you know, I actually just turned on my amp for the first time, whether I should be admitting this or not. Like I said, I've been playing tons of music, but just not the opportunity to get loud. But just last week, I freaking got loud. Didn't wear your plugs, just sent it. And uh, <laughs> it felt great. It, it, yeah. So I would say for new language, you know, I think there's some personal things going on in people's lives. It, like our guitarist was on the East Coast, singers in Pasadena. I'm here in kind of mid city. So We'll get together and jam, you know, when the world opens up and we feel safe. Otherwise, it's going to be this remote thing and all of us just writing music. And then we'll see what happens when the world opens back up. Got you. And if people want to know what you guys are up to, the best place to look would be newlanguageband.com. That works. Probably our Instagram. Yeah, any of those. But everything's New Language Band. So newlanguageband.com, Instagram, New Language Band, Twitter, New Language Band. Facebook. Uh, YouTube, all of the things. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, Matt, we appreciate you taking time and sitting yeah. down with us and chatting. Folks, Thanks you've, so much. you've seen him here, Matt Cohen on Bass Musician Magazine. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.